Hello, Seeker. Welcome to The Existential Shift. My name is Morgaine. I am very excited about this episode of uh, my 13th Element series. Well, I'm excited about every 13th Element episode, but this one, this one. Um, I was asked a question by a Seeker during one of our spiritual Q&A lives, which led me to discuss... Um, this topic that I want to speak of. Buddhism, Judaism, reincarnations, and the choice of the soul in the matter. So uh, the question was regarding the choice of the soul in matters of reincarnations, but it connects to Judaism and Buddhism and how they connect to one another. That's how um, I free, that's how I gave the answer, and I would like to elaborate on the topic here. So, in Judaism, we have our parent telling us to clean our room as children, and we clean our room not necessarily because we understand why or appreciate the merit in it. We clean it because we're told because. <laughs> Our parents are in control, and so we do it, even though maybe we'd rather play outside, or maybe we'd rather just watch a movie. We clean our room. As this become a habit, and we continue doing so, and we grow up and we become teenagers and then adults, we learn the merit in it, we learn the value in it, and we continue doing so, starting as a habit, but then continue doing so because we understand the importance of it and we choose to do it ourselves, even though we might not be living with our parents anymore. They're not telling us to clean our room and yet we're cleaning our room and even passing it forward to our children. In the times of the Torah, the Torah was written between 1500 before Count BC and around 500 BC or even to a later stage, maybe even to later stages. It could be off a little bit about um, how long it took to write it, but it started approximately 3,500 years ago. Um, and back then, humanity's consciousness wasn't in a place where it understood why it needs to clean the room. So the Ten Commandments were given as a commandment. This is what you need to do. If you understand why, great. If you don't understand why, it doesn't matter. Just do it, right? Clean your room. Thou shall not clean, thou shall not kill. It's actually thou shall not murder. Uh, in Hebrew, the, the commandment is lo tirzach. So it should be thou shall not murder, but it got translated to thou shall not kill. It does have a bit of a different meaning. Um, thou shall not steal, and so on and so forth. Just clean your your room, do as you're told, whether you get it or not. That's just the right way of doing things. With time, you'll get it. With time, we did. Humanity consciousness has evolved. See, the divine tells us what to do or guides us towards the best way, the best path to enlightenment and to higher consciousness and unison with God and oneness consciousness in accordance to where we're at consciousness-wise. Can we handle this or not, right? The child, when they grow up, they can handle possibly learning how to ride a horse, but when they are two years old, three years old, you're not going to let them do that because they don't have the capacity. They're not prepared. So as we matured with our consciousness as humanity, Buddhism came along and has the 10 precepts that are very similar to the Ten Commandments, but Buddhism approaches it from a different perspective. It call it refers to itself as uh, Buddhism refers to itself as uh, spiritual maturity, meaning you're cleaning your room, right? There's there just like there's a commandment to not murder. There's also a commandment to not murder in the Ten Precepts, to not steal, to not steal, to not covet, to not covet. It's some of them are written a little bit differently, but they pretty much repeat each other. And when you read the two, you're like, well, what's the difference? The approach is in Buddhism, this is a matter of, you're not told necessarily that you have to, but we expect you to understand why you probably should. And if in Judaism, the consequences to not doing, to not following the commandments is, you know, um, quote unquote punishment or, you know, 
a consequences that is imposed on you from an outside God. In Buddhism, it's referred to as karma, cause and effect. No one is sitting on a cloud and telling you to not do something, but by the by default of how life operates and how energy works, when you put something out there, you receive it in turn. So learn the merit of doing the right thing. Otherwise, you will experience the karma of whatever it is that you did or didn't do. Um, the bottom line is the bottom line. You know, the parent of the child knew exactly exactly right from wrong, and it was a good thing. But then they kind of took their hands off the reins as the child matured and have allowed the child to express their free choice, their understanding, and allowed them to deal with the consequences. When you're a kid and you don't do as you're told, your parent might not, you know, might take your iPad or <laughs> get you grounded or whatever the case may be. But when you grow up and you don't clean your room, you have to live in your own filth. Both carry consequences, negative consequences. Both carry, you might want to call it a punishment. It just comes to you in a different way for a different reason. In the first, you don't have free choice. It's like you're not ready for free choice. You're not ready as a toddler to choose to go on a horse and ride. You're just not ready for it. But as you grow up and mature and have been around a little bit and have cleaned your room again and again and have learned why it's good and you're likely to choose the right thing, then your parents or God or the divine can take their hands off the reins and kind of let you do your thing and either benefit from it or not benefit from it, cause and effect, karma, etc. In this way, and this is what I believe and how I view Judaism and Buddhism, Judaism and Buddhism are very complementary to one another. And both are necessary. It's not that one is more advanced than the other, right? It's not that Buddhism is more advanced than Judaism. Without the foundations that Judaism has implemented, without the proper education of the child while it was a child, it wouldn't have the tools. It wouldn't have the tools as they grow up to be able to behave in a free choice matter, right? If we only had Buddhism without the premise of Judaism, the child would not know or the adult would not know how to make proper choices because it would not have the experience that their parents have forced or implemented onto them, aka if you're just kind of stepping into Buddhism without the premise of the tools and wisdom that Judaism gave you, you're not ready for it. You keep falling in between the cracks. And vice versa, you can't constantly be told what to do. At one point, your consciousness expands to a point where you need to be able to make your own decisions. So that's the point where you get to move or integrate Buddhism into Judaism or the wisdom of, you know, one's wisdom to the other. It's important for me to clarify that you don't have to take it as a religious aspect. Um, I don't expect you to take an oath to either <laughs> or to commit to either. I'm giving you the explanation of, of the wisdom of them both, how they connect to one another, and why I personally believe that Maitreya, which is considered to be the Messiah, of the of Buddhism, right? The, the Jew, Jewish people have the Messiah, Mashiach. It was then adapted by Christianity and Islam, someone that will come and deliver us from whatever, but or a savior of some sort. But the origin of the um, of of the archetype of the character Messiah, Mashiach, is from Judaism, and then Buddhism has Maitreya. Right, also a form of Messiah, the one that will come and be the next Buddha. So I believe that Maitreya, aka the next Buddha, this is what I see as a spiritual teacher and as a seer. Um, Maitreya will bring the two together and will teach humanity and society, societies, the merit of combining the two and understanding how not only that they're not different. It's actually the same parent, right? The same divine entity, God, Buddha, give it whatever name you want, that guides their children from one level of consciousness through 
the higher level, the higher levels of consciousness. It's just what humanity is more and more ready for. Um, I'm picking up on a question if someone is wondering, Buddhism came around 500 BC. Okay. So, and, and before that there was Hinduism and there were Vedic, um, the Vedic culture. Uh, and I'm not entirely certain about the dates exactly historically, but it goes back around to the same time of Judaism. So they're kind of, Buddhism came way later than Judaism, but Hinduism was there before that and Vedic was there before that. So Vedic culture and Judaism have kind of been, have kind of came to the world um, around the same time historically. Now, another interesting, I will, I will get to the point of whether or not a soul chooses to reincarnate. Don't worry. It all, it all comes, it all comes together. Um, another interesting aspect of the connection between Judaism and Buddhism, Jesus, who was Yehoshua, right? Yehoshua Minatzrat, Jesus of Nazareth. He was um, he was a Jewish rabbi, an Israelite, in Hebrew. He learned, he studied the Torah. Um, he spoke Aramaic, which is the birth, which, which is the origin of Hebrew. So, he, he, at the time, he actually already spoke Hebrew. By the way, um, I don't want to go into that. That's that's a little bit kind of. I'm, I'm just taking I'm just taking a round trip. That is not necessarily necessary. What, what I do want to point out is that during his time as a Jewish rabbi, he traveled to the East and have visited Buddhist temples and even stayed at a Buddhist temple. I personally believe, and forgive me any Christian who doesn't like what I'm about to say, and I'm saying it with love and respect to everyone. This is my, this is what I see as a seer, as the seer that I am. Okay. I personally believe that Jesus was the first um, in initiation of the connection between Buddhism and Christianity, um, was the first round of it, right? Uh, and I, Buddhism and Judaism, I'm sorry. And I think that Christianity, what it has become was some, was kind of a misinterpretation or um, I don't know, a misunderstanding of the message of Jesus, of Yeshua, who was both Jewish and Buddhist. Uh, and you can see it in his teachings. You can see that once you learn Judaism and Buddhism, and you have the knowledge of both, and you then, you know, look into the teachings of Jesus, of Yeshua, you see how much it's like a combination of both. And I think it's about time that the two... Well, they're already connected and integrated, but that we become aware of their connection and integration. So see this video as a, as an initiation of that, you know, and if you resonate with this and if you connect to this message, please share this message. Um, it's important for me to note, and once again, I will circle, I will uh, explain whether souls choose <laughs> to reincarnate or not. I will connect everything I did not forget. Okay. Um, something that is important for me to note, this is coming from me. This is my belief. This is my, um, analysis, um, based on my studies and based on my experiences and based on my sight and communication. I have not read this anywhere. I have not learned this from someone else, not from a person nor from a book. It's a combination of my knowledge and my analysis. If you know of someone who have who has published, uh, spoken, posted, advertised, be it an article, a video, whatever the case may be, a book that speaks about what I'm saying here, I would like to know about it. Please comment. However, I thought about it. I felt it. I, that doesn't count. If it's something that is actually published and is already out there, I would like to know. As far as I know, this is coming from me. Um, but if if this has been around already or if someone has already expressed it, I would really like to know. So feel free to share that with me. And thank you. And of course, feel free to share this message. Now, drum roll. Okay. So 
the soul choosing or not choosing to reincarnate into this wheel of samsara, into this earth plane 3D reincarnation. Same as what I said is how a child begins as humanity when it was in lo- relatively in a lower state of consciousness, not prepared. First, it was introduced as to the introduced to the right ways with the Torah, the Torah, what, what Christianity rebranded as the um, the Old Testament. Um, I'm picking up that some of you might think I have an issue with Christianity. No, I don't have an issue with anyone unless there's something specific that is done that is not very right. And I like to say things as they are. It's just the truth of the matter. There's so much wisdom and beauty in that religion as well, right? Um, but it's just it's just a reality. It's not really... Um, the Referring to it as the Old Testament is basically referring to it as the rebranded, somewhat colonized um, version of the Torah, which is the original Bible, uh, which is written in Hebrew by the Israelites, right? So this is about not, this is not about disrespecting as it is about respecting the source and the origin and not perpetuating the, um, the historic misconceptions to say, you know, to describe it in a mild way. Um, so similarly to how humanity needed to be told what the right thing to do is first and kind of, you're going to clean your room. A soul first comes here when it's, uh, when it's relatively still in a very low frequency place. Let's say when it comes from lower dimensions. Okay. When it's, when it's begin, when it begins its journey th- towards one is consciousness out of fragmentation and separation. Um, it's still not ready to make its own best decisions. It still needs to be told to come here to this school of samsara. So in the early stages of the the progression of a soul in relation to what a soul is, you're told to come to this planet. It's not free choice. Just like when you're a child, you're you're just put in kindergarten and then you're just put in elementary school. But then when it comes to college, you get to choose. So after a few reincarnations and after you reach a certain level of consciousness and you're trusted with making decisions, then you get the free choice. Do you sign up for college or do you not sign up for college? Do you sign up for a doctorate or do you not sign up for a doctorate? Do you keep, do you continue coming here because you want to learn and expand even more or do you not? So it starts without free choice without free will, and it continues and progresses depending on your progression and your growth and your learning process, it becomes free choice. At one point, you graduate and you no longer stay in the cycle of school, samsara, earth, reincarnations, and you, you know, I I don't feel comfortable in saying exactly how it is. I'd like to maintain a level of humility uh, and self-awareness, but I would refer to it from my understanding as just closer to oneness, closer to the divine, closer to God, integrated back into God. If not, maybe you're just promoted to be an archangel, an ascended master, a Buddha, etc. Um, it's kind of like you know, it doesn't always feel like free choice, even though it may have been free choice for you, you know, because kind of like when we sign up to school, to college, and we don't have to be there. We chose to pay tuition. We chose to go there. But we know that in order to graduate, and in order to attain the knowledge that we seek, in order to get the diploma, one might call it, uh, we got to attend classes and we got to study and we got to pass the exams and sometimes it's frustrating and sometimes you wake up in the morning and you don't want to go to class and sometimes you rather do something else else and not study and not do the work so it feels like you're forced oh i wish i didn't have to go to class but you signed up for it and you don't really have to but you understand the consequences of not so you continue so a lot of souls here you know just because you a lot of times if say you get frustrated a lot and you don't understand why you're here it's not necessarily because you're a beginner soul, quote unquote. Um, It could be that you chose to come here. You had the privilege of choosing to come here or the bandwidth, consciousness bandwidth to choose to come here. And it's still hard. And it's real frustrating. That's okay. 
All right. So that was that about the soul's choice about whether, whether it's reincarnate or not, uh, the connection between Judaism and Buddhism. Uh, both, by the way, believe in reincarnations. Uh, in Judaism, there is no hell, for example, that came with Christianity. Uh, it also existed somewhat in uh, in the um, Celtic belief systems where there's Helheim. Um, that's where the word hell come from, by the way. It's actually originally a pagan word to lower dimensions. In the Greek mythology, we have the underworld. But in Judaism, you do have the Sheol. Sheol is the origin to the underworld and Helheim, etc. Uh, but it's not a realm to which you go for punishment or condemnation or eternal, internal, con eternal condemnation. Right? It's it's where the um, the dead kind of go to to be processed. It's it's another lower it's a lower dimension kind of thing, uh, of a different frequency. I don't want to go into all of that. I just wanted to mention the similarities of there's in both there's reincarnations. Right, both in Judaism and in Buddhism. Uh, in both, there's a journey to the soul. In both, there's accountability. Whether you call it punishment from God or you call it karma, <laughs> bottom line is consequences to your actions. So we, knew, we should be accountable, not expecting to be saved from the outside, but understanding the work that we must put into. They're, they they really um, kind of connect on so many ways but this was the the important message that i wanted to deliver today um so thank you so much for tuning in if you're new be sure to subscribe and if you approve of this message be sure to share if you want more 13th element episodes right here um yeah i love you stay magic stay true <laughs> שבה לרקוד